two uninhabited Pacific islands. More than 5,000 miles from the UK. One will be inhabited by 14 British men, while a separate island will be home to 14 British women. For six weeks, they will be utterly alone, with only the clothes they stand up in and a handful of basic tools. Filming everything themselves. When pushed to the limits of human endurance, will it be brute power? Ooh, that's what a bit of graft does for you, boys. Or mental strength that wins the day. What's that? Is that Andrew? Oh my god. Oh my god. Who will have what it takes to stay alive? Tonight we follow the men's island. Yay! You're right! I think the current's got them. Start paddling now! Paddle, paddle! Like actually it could have died. Survival will be harder than ever. They'll have to endure the height of the harsh tropical storm season. Everyone's wet, everyone's cold, everyone's miserable, everyone's tired. They'll have to find their own water and hunt for their own food. What the effing hell is that? Have these modern-day men got what it takes to survive? Your three-and-a-half-hour making soup could be done in 25 minutes. You tell any chef that cooking for 11 people is physically easy and he'll stab you in the eye. Weeks ago, 14 British men were cast away on this remote Pacific island. Woo! That was the damnedest thing I ever did. Living on the edge of existence. Okay, Vic, I go now, go now. Right, that's it. Until 47-year-old Vic. Here we go, puppy that's dog. It, yes. Led them to capture and kill oh, the island's number one predator. We just caught a prehistoric animal. But despite their best efforts, they've not been able to repeat the success. Trap empty. The onset of starvation looks upon us. And feast has turned to famine. Hey, look, you can see Piers' heart yeah. beating through his chest. Boys, there's no meat on you. I think we're going to run some really hard times in the next couple of weeks, and we'll see. We'll, it'll test everybody's mettle, mine as much as anybody else. Guys, there's a snake here. Keep track of it, we're coming. Okay, Bonnie. Knock it off. <laughs> oh my bugs. gosh. Bonnie, you've become a killer. It's food, but I see they take no pleasure from doing that whatsoever. It's the second bloody animal I've beheaded since being here. Killer. <laughs> In the four days since the men caught and ate the crocodile, they've had to survive on slim pickings. Oh, hello. It's oh, eaten it's a, little bird or a something. baby bird. Yeah, hell, look at that. <laughs> a bird and a snake. Get him on the fire too. Yeah, Leave man. Him in there. Pass me a bit. It's like snake crisps. Yeah, like pork, it's very like pork scratching. Oh, man, guilt. Apart from the odd opportunistic kill, the only man who's been able to provide anything like a regular supply of food for the group is 47-year-old Vic. Look at the size of that bitch! Woo! If I didn't have the mouths to feed, I would live like a king. There's no two ways about that. It's a shame nobody else is raking food in, because that would be helpful. If he wants to go out and catch amazing fish and keeps me fed every night, I'm not going to stop the guy. But even with Vic's contributions, the men are burning far more calories than they're consuming. I'm slowly evaporating. Um, soon to disappear down the plug hole. What happens in these periods of starvation is that the body starts to eat into its own fat reserves and key muscle groups, like your legs, that you desperately need in a survival situation. And then over time, as the brain also gets starved of nutrients, that decline becomes mental as well as physical. And that then affects your ability to make smart, rational decisions.
Yeah, that's new, that's fresh. This is dry as a bone, this stuff. We got it. Done it. Every day, the men face a round of essential back-breaking chores. I feel pretty tired. Which leave them little time or energy for hunting. With no food to sustain them, the group's cook, Sam Brown, is doing his best to rustle up an edible lunch from leftover fish bits, crocodile bones and limpets. Put the stew on, we're boiling the bones down, we're going to save the big bones so we can make a stock. I'm trying to feed 11 people in the next hour or two hours. A lot of the cooking has fallen on my shoulders. I'd rather do it and do it well than watch someone else f it up and go hungry or uh, have to pick fish scales out of my food. Oh, f sake, guys. What? Oh, I'm filled with limpet guts. Yeah, We've got uh, 11 bowls, three of which have been used as spittoons. That's overnight rotting limpet guts. That's disgusting, and that's going to give us diarrhoea, vomiting. That's going to get you off the island really fast. Right, somebody needs to be on washing up detail. Well, wash all them. Yeah. They don't wash themselves, boys. I think what you just said, they're a little bit unfair there, Sam. I'll talk to them when we get back. No, why didn't you do it? Do what? Why don't that? you take them down and wash them? Because I'm washing the I'm washing the fire, and I'm cooking the soup. That's not was, a massive was... hard task, though, is it? It's not. Well, a... if that soup pot falls over, we're all stuck. We're all fucked. It's not a physically hard task, though, is it? That's what I'm getting at. It's not a physically hard task. But... Some of us are really working really hard. We're all sweating those balls off. We are. Okay, mate. Cook a pot of soup, and we'll talk. That's what I'm saying. There are one or two people that are fantastic at avoiding what they're meant to do and lucky busy doing very little. I kind of think, like, if a tree falls in the forest and Vic's not there to hear it, it doesn't count. Like, only work that he does or work that people do right next to him counts. Fuck that shit. For the men on the island, they're spending every waking hour in each other's company, and they get no respite from the intensity of that situation. And in many ways, it's little surprise that they're starting to turn on each other. OK. This should be, this should be good. Mm. After a morning of hard labour, the hungry men sit down, hoping to enjoy Sam's soup. God, it smells funky, doesn't it? it smells like crap. There is some distinct smell of poo about this. Mm. It smells a bit like dog shit, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't swallow it. I literally couldn't swallow it. Ugh, almost made me puke. <laughs> After a barely edible lunch, Vic is determined to have a decent dinner. I might have fish. What choice do I have? I don't want to eat limpets again. The crap. Yeah. I'll eat them, but the crap. Flagging after their morning chores, the rest of the men decide to stay behind in camp. Everything's an effort. That's how I feel right now. Knackered, boys. Absolutely knackered. Completely not very knackered. Nobody asks me to go fishing, but they know I'll go fishing to get food. And I know they're doing the daily chores, but guys just aren't going that extra yard. Come on, boys. Once you've finished your duties, or you don't have much of a duty, that ain't end of day, is it? I am prejudiced against everybody that isn't me. Because uh, if you all did it my way, it'd be a much better place. But I provide for my family. I'm a good father, I'm a good husband, I hope. I hope I'm an excellent lover. I suppose you could boil I don't know, I'm gonna cope without speaking to my wife and kids for that length of time, I've no idea. Really don't know, no idea. Gives me goosebumps, not sure. Dude, you are an absolute fish-tickling bastard, aren't you? Late afternoon. Do you want a hand with them? After four hours of fishing, Vic has single-handedly provided dinner for the rest of the men. That is so hard. I'm fucked. Nobody been and got any coconut, no? No. <sighs> it's getting harder and harder every day coming back and seeing everybody laid on the fucking beach and I'm sit, catching fish. Sit. No, I'm all right. I don't need to sit down. I need coconut. I need water. Coconuts we're getting tomorrow. 
fucking hell. I thought we were going out for coconut or something. How difficult would it be for two or three lads to go across and get a bag full of coconuts? What, 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 what do you want me to do that as well? Fed up of the group taking him for granted, Vic's made a big decision. Bollocks to it, I'm not fishing anymore. Somebody else go fishing. I might have a couple of days off, see how everybody fares them. It's somebody else's turn to step up to the plate. Wowzers. You've done incredibly yeah, well, Vic. Yeah, you really have, You've done it absolutely brilliantly. Yeah. You absolutely nailed it. Thanks so much. I have a couple of things to say, and I'm unsure whether to say them now because I don't want to spoil the atmosphere or save them to the end of the night. So, do I do them say now? Them now. Yeah, say them right. now. Let's have them now. So, okay. Today, I spent fishing all day on my own. But we're all sat around here, happy as pigs in shit, eating though now. And I went without a buddy. Perhaps you yeah. shouldn't have gone without a buddy. But if I hadn't have gone when I went, we wouldn't all be eating. I certainly don't want to be busting a gut and come back to see people kipping, pampering, tossing it off, doing whatever. It's not fair. It's not fair. That's top and bottom of it. It's not fair. I think it's a, it's a very good point, Vic, and I, I'm glad you've raised it. So, I'll put my rods down, you'll fish for your own snap, and I'll eat limpets like rest of yours. The group's most skilled hunter has gone on fishing strike. That's it. OK? Yep, that's it. Understood. The burden of finding food will now fall on the rest of the men. We are knackered. We are screwed. We have relied solely on fish, rod, rod catching. Most of from Vic. But tomorrow, I'm a bit worried because I'm not sure the guys are going to cope. It scares me. I think everyone's feeling a little bit uh, sluggish today, aren't they? Yeah, I know what you mean. 7 a.m. Dan and Sam Brown are on the early morning water run. How are you feeling after your little debate yesterday? Oh, with Vic? Yeah. Pretty good? I think Vic was just maybe trying to pick a bit of a fight yesterday. Yeah, he likes to push buttons. I think he likes to niggle. He likes a little... Yeah. You know, he sort of... He, like, he has a sort of, like, uh, oh, I'm nice as pie, da-da-da. Fuck off, he is. Where's my hat? Last night, 47-year-old Vic, the group's most successful hunter, announced that he was going on fishing strike. I'm absolutely knackered. Are you? Yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. This trudging out, catching fish and trudging back day after day after day after day after day. It's not fair. How many fishing lines have you hooked up before, Phil? None. The burden of finding a fish supper now lies with the other men. There is absolutely no food in this camp. There is no reserve. There's no larder that we have here at the moment. So if we don't catch anything today, we don't eat. Right, so where, where are the points to go fishing? Although refusing to fish himself, Vic doesn't want to go hungry, so he offers the men some advice. Get your hook and put it through the limpet at the top, OK? Then turn the limpet and come back through the soft okay. gel. Feel, feel, feel. Boom. But yeah. hidden on that, I would say just hidden and right on the edge. Yeah. Because yeah. they nibble on the edge and they want them to just get nibble it and get caught. You undermine me every time when I start sorry. telling about stuff and it's rude. Oh, sorry. Please don't do it. Sorry. Vic. Okay. I'm, I, I thought I was adding to you. No. Uh, so if you put two limpets on, he was very quick to swipe at me, and I think maybe Vic has lost perspective a little bit. He thinks that he is um, the kingpin and that he is providing more than anyone else and doing more than everyone else. I don't know if he feels he needs to contribute, so if we all think he's contributed or... I don't know, but it's rude. Well, you shouldn't do it. I'm thinking three, maybe four bottles around each pole, and then just like that all the way along. We are going to adapt and overcome. 36-year-old Will has come up with an ambitious plan to fish the deeper waters surrounding the island. We've got to make a raft so we can get in the middle of the channel, massive hook, big fish bait, 
I would love it to have a tuna. That would be the best day ever. Imagine that. Sashimi. Um, we don't have any oil drums or anything. What we've got on this island is shed loads of empty plastic bottles. Fingers crossed she'll float. Right. Let's get trucking. While he waits for the men to find him food, Vic takes the opportunity to make a bed for himself. So unlike the others, he'll be protected from critters on the jungle floor. Look at that natural twine. What an absolute biscuit. Yeah, I'm happy with this so far. I don't have a double bed, I'm afraid, so I can't interest my wife in sleeping with me this evening. So I'm just going to single it up. Having isolated himself from the other men, Vic's thoughts are increasingly turning to family. I had a very unnerving dream last night about home, which was very horrible, woke me up in not such a pleasant mood. I'm missing home desperately. Keep thinking more and more about my wife and kids every day. I could do with a kiss and a cuddle off my missus. Squeeze the life out of a blesser. raft is ready to set sail. I came up with the idea I shall name this uh, raft after my two gorgeous daughters, Freya and Pippa. So we call it Fripster. <laughs> nice, mate. You're getting the axes, I'm getting I'll get the get, guys. Even. It looks like a bunch of bottles attached to um, some planks because it is a bunch of bottles attached to some planks. But our livelihood and our dependency on food relies on it. So go on, Fripster. Fingers crossed for the inaugural launch. Get some fish. I name this boat Fripster the first. Long may she catch us fish from the deep. Right, on we get. Are you ready? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, you're right. You are sailing oh. the Fripster Road. Come on, lad. <laughs> See you in two weeks. Bye. She floats! Yes! She floats! I think one of the real unsung heroes in the survivor's arsenal is resourcefulness. Being able to look at an everyday object and think of clever, ingenious ways of using it to help you. The risks are big, but the spoils could be even bigger if that raft succeeds. Bigger strokes, mate. Reach. After a huge joint effort from all the men, apart from Vic, the raft appears to be a success. Most of the group are now out trying to catch supper. I've not got the patience for fishing, I'll tell you that for nothing. Leaving the gruelling job of firewood to Vic and IT consultant Kyle. Kyle, why do we need a shitload more kindling today than we have done? It's not heavy stuff, is it? Yeah. Kyle's still quite gifted at doing very little. But well, that's the problem with intelligent people, because they think they're cleverer than the people that they're out, out doing the job for. They think they can outthink them. When it comes to manual labour, Jesus Christ, lad, stop getting all crazy. It's manual labour, which is every job we've got. I think on this island there will be people that come off physically bollocks, regardless of diet, whether we eat or we don't eat, and there'll be guys come off who aren't. And if we're not all hanging out of our ass at the end of this, yeah. somebody hasn't been working hard enough, have they? Would you agree with that? No, it could happen where we're not all spent. We work hard as a team, we achieve a lot, and at the end, we're not all sort of hanging out of our asses. That could happen. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm I'm talking what are you talking about? You're I'm just talking English. I'm uneducated, you have to lower it down to my what level. didn't you understand? There's I, a term I don't we use where... in Yorkshire, layman's terms. Yeah. Every job is a manual job. Do we agree? Yeah. So if we all plough into that 100% manually, yep. we will all be bollocks at the end of this journey. No, I, I've already said I don't, I don't think right, at then, the end of this. Let me say it again, then. All he goes on about is this is a physical place. Every task in there is physical. Whoopie do. You know, that's brilliant, but we're not all just grunts that have been sent out here to bash on bits of wood. You can talk your way around whatever you want, top and bottom of it is. It's a physical island. Every job is physical. 
we should all be bollocks. If not, somebody's carrying somebody else. That's the top and bottom of it. Mid-afternoon. Still reeling from yesterday's argument with Vic, Sam Brown is trying to catch some dinner. Vic keeps making little remarks to me that just make me seethe. So what uh, was getting his goat this morning? Oh, mate, a whole load of things. If we can catch some fish... Hopefully Vic will be in a slightly better mood. After three hours on the water, Barney and Sam haven't had a single bite. So what are you thinking with this rod? I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe they always say uh, patience is a virtue, don't they? And uh, I'm quite impatient. <laughs> that line tight? No. No, no bite. Oh, fuck it, let's go in. With nightfall approaching, the other men also return to camp. Vic is waiting to see how many fish they have caught in his absence. No joy, fella. No, I had a nice day fishing, as you'd say, Vic. <laughs> Not catching. No dog should learn new tricks. Should listen when I tell him. Did you not listen? No. Four hours fishing and one poxy trigger. I fucking hate fishing. It's exhausting just standing there in the sun for X amount of hours. Charlie caught a fish. Well, that ain't feeding nobody, is it? I ain't feeding jack shit. It's just limpets again. The men's attempts to provide dinner without Vic's help have been a miserable failure. Desperation corner over here. <laughs> Pressure is on me to feed everybody. It's almost as though I am expected to grab a rod and go out and catch fish so everybody else can eat. And that ain't good. I don't like that. See you in the morning, ladies. With no food in camp, Vic opts for an early night in his new bed. You on the beach, sir? Oh, dear. Let me get myself ready for bed. Oh, dear God, yeah, that's lovely. That is... He has to remember that we are a team here, and with certain things, he is quite selfish. It does not get any better, does it? For a family man, I might have expected him to be uh, more considerate of others. Oh. Oh, boys, you don't know what you're missing. Vic's bed is a success. While on fishing strike, 47-year-old Vic has built himself a raised bed. Mm, yeah, that was a good night's skip. That had some lovely dreams. For some reason, one of us knew Jonathan Ross. And we ended up in his house he, uh, trying to catch his fish out of his fish tank. Can't think why. Oh. Oh, I love my bed. Protected from the jungle critters, Vic has had his best sleep yet. While the others have had their worst. Oh, my legs are bitten to shit, my arms are bitten to shit. Sleeping rough on the jungle floor, the men have been attacked overnight by a swarm of sandflies. They're everywhere, covered in them. Yeah. Must have, you know. 500 bites or so. I'm just not having a good reaction to them. And they're starting to swell up. You may think on a desert island your real enemies are the crocs, the scorpions, the snakes, uh, but actually it's often the little things you can't see. And worse of these are sand flies. They're super itchy, 10 times worse than a mosquito. You scratch away, it's hot, it's humid, and that's when the bites can become infected. They have had a massive go. 
Oh. This island either wants to decompose you from the outside in or eat you alive. Good job I'm not going on a date anytime soon. Reeling from last night's infestation, the men call an emergency meeting. I've got to put my hands up and say, my insight points are so bad, I can barely walk. I can't even walk, I can't even go in the sun. So I'm happy to chop wood and stuff in here, but if I go in the sun, my legs just flare up and I can't even move them. Yeah. Tomorrow it might be down, but today is absolutely excruciating. It's like someone's, it's like someone's puffing fire into my calves when I move yeah. them. My worry with these bites, because they just seem to be, like, escalating a notch, like, that's... I worry that, what with all the rain, uh, some other kind of bug might have hatched. They might be starting to feast on us. Today, priorities. I think we just concentrate on just trying to get as many of these beds up as possible. Raised beds are the group's best protection against further attacks. Right, you ready? Cos this one might jump. Having built his own yesterday, Vic temporarily ends his work to rule, to lend a helping hand. I think all of us, as a full team of 11, get stuck into beds. Everybody's bed. Go on, give it some. Go on, hit it! I might be quite pushy with it, so we really get stuck into it. Stamp on it, fella. All 11 stone here. Bingo! Yeah. Woo, that's what a bit of graft does for you, boys. Right, mine Fuhrer, what do you think? Perfect. With all available hands on beds and nobody hunting or fishing, cameraman Sam Brown has once again spent the morning trying to conjure up something for lunch. I feel a little bit like the child catcher this morning. We're going to boil them all to death and then eat them with soup. Shush, my pretties, it's nearly over. I think the only job I haven't done so far on this tour is the difficult task of cooking. Hmm, cooking. Right, Sam, there's guys up there busting the knackers. I don't know how many blisters. I'm going to help the lads with wood. That's all. I've just been up to help the lads with wood. No and there's no more for me to carry down, Let's Vic. chop some down, then. If he keeps going like that, you know, I'll react. You know, I know I will. It's good for us to vent. Fucking hell. Shit! It's good to get it off your chest now and again, Barney. You lazy bunch of bone idle bastards! Makes us all feel much better. They're chopping wood. They're not busting a gut. I can't help them chop more because I don't have a fucking machete. We've only got three in camp. A leaderless group fighting to stay alive is always going to face conflict. And what happens, individuals tend to push their own agendas, and that, in turn, takes away valuable time, valuable energy for the things that really matter. How's the soup looking, Sam? Uh, really good, mate. Really, really good. Your three-and-a-half-hour making soup could be done in 25 minutes. You want to... You, really? How difficult can stirring soup be? To some would look like you didn't want to go do the harder job. Excuse me? Some would say it's because you didn't want to go bust the gut. I would say fuck you to that person, that's what I'd say. No, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Should we just calm it down a bit? We're here for another, what, three or four weeks? Just let's fucking calm down, eh? There's no need to be like this. So you're saying I'm avoiding graft, Vic, is that what you're saying? Are you? That sounded very much like you were just a second ago. You're answering a question with a question, are you? What? Are you? What? Am I avoiding graft? Yeah. I fucking don't think so, man. Then why are you biting, then? What? Cos you've been niggling for weeks. Have I? This is what it boils down to for me, Vic. You act like certain jobs are like macho jobs, fishing, chopping wood, everything else, women's work. That's, that's the feeling I get, right? And if that's cooking, if that's fucking carrying water, whatever it is, in your head, it's like, this is graft, this is good, everything else, pff, no, not difficult. I, I, I think feeding everybody is one of the most important jobs on this island. So do I. Every job is a manual job. Yeah. Some jobs are done. They're done. 25 minutes, they're done. Yeah. And every three quarters of an hour, you steer it. Yeah. Is that right? What I'm trying to do, Vic, is get as many good meals out of this as I can, right? Rather than just Which use it once and throw it away. Which is appreciated, because we all need it. Yeah. So maybe just keep your comments to yourself if you don't know about it, huh? 
I thought we were allowed to wear his comments. Yeah, well, it's great, but if you want to fucking, like, if you want to piss me off, you're going about it the right way. Some jobs are physically easy, some jobs aren't. Is that you a better way of putting it? You tell any chef that cooking for 11 people is physically easy and he'll stab you in the fucking eye. You're like, like absolutely furious. If a mate said that to me, I, I fucking hit them, you know? If someone at work said that, we'd have trouble, you know? Fucking, but I just, I don't know, I take... There's no, there's no good way to take that, right? I take that as, like, a, like a stab at my integrity. Fucking, fucking man. I look forward to sitting down in some 25 minutes soup at some stage. We built the honeymoon suite. It is strong enough for the rumpy pumpy, you say? Yeah. 4 p.m. After a day of hard graft, the beds are finished. Welcome to the chateau. Let's open the curtain. And that there is the most uncomfortable bed anyone will ever sleep on. Ah. Oh. This is where the magic happens. It's not too bad, actually. I will say one thing. What? Right above your head. A lot of daylight. That, Pierce, is, is my is skylight. The men will now have better protection from the jungle critters. But the day of hard physical labour has left them hungry and shattered. I am running on empty. I feel like I'm lugging my body about. I can't even stand up straight. I'm starting to sway, starting to slur my words a bit. Since Vic went on fishing strike, the men have survived on Sam's leftover soup and slithers of coconut. And Vic isn't impressed. If I any more of this shit, I'm gonna puke. It's horrible. Coconut. Yay! That's your shit through iron needle. Mother Nature, you can be a cruel, cruel mistress. Do you know that? She's not going to beat me. She's certainly not going to beat me. Fucking hell, fire. Disgusting. Ah, screw it. That's it, I've had enough. Come on, Victor, let's have some fish. Despite Vic's strike, he's determined to catch a decent fish supper and persuades Kyle to join him on the raft. Instead of catching little fish, I want to be catching something bigger. What's getting out there? With my health and safety hat on, I'd be more worried that we've got a homemade raft in some very strong currents in a very deep piece of water. Vic and Kyle are already 200 yards from shore. Should something happen, they're dangerously out of their depth. Oh, this is something, Vic. Ooh. Has Daddy got a tug? Oh! oh. oh. Bit of a tug? Oh! I think Daddy might have a oh. tug, pal. Mmm, get on the end of that, kid. Oh. Get on the end of that. I'm not sure what it is. What the fuck is that? What the effing hell is that? We got fuck ourselves a now. fucking eel kid. Got... You, sir, are going fucking nowhere. Can you hold that for me? Yeah, of course. Thank you. <clears throat> right, now I've pinned him. Pinned him down to the side. Good man. I now need to club him with something, and I think that might be this. Have I got plenty of space? <clears throat> oh, yes. Yeah, I do believe that's him as we speak now. Right, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. I've got... Oh, you fucker, you! I don't like this fucking fighting back bollocks at all. 
I really don't. The 200, 300, 400 yards out now, and still going. One of the most precious resources that the men actually have is their own energy. When you're living hand to mouth, struggling for every mouthful of food, the temptation is to go to greater and greater lengths to get that precious energy. Well, that's it. I can now tie you up safely. But here's the danger. The more malnourished the men get, the more their judgment gets impaired. That's when the small mistakes become full-blown emergencies. And that can happen in the blink of an eye. Ah, so that's putting us back. Come on. So that is one hell of a tide, isn't it? Let's be getting carried. We are going backwards. Right, go on, paddle, paddle, paddle. Don't stop. Vic and Kyle are attempting to paddle back to the beach. I don't like liquids, mate. No, neither do I. Start paddling now! But they've been caught by a powerful undercurrent. Paddle. Paddle, go! You all right? I think the current's got them. Come on, let's go. Fucking hell. Come on! Come on, boy. Go! We're going to crash, though. Come on. At the mercy of the current, the raft is on a collision course with the island's treacherous rocky coastline which could tear the men to shreds. Go on, Kyle, dig the fucker in. Paddle, paddle! A turn again, you... Oh, baby. It'll... Right, paddle, paddle! Paddle! Don't stop, don't stop. Everybody safe. Everybody OK? No injuries? Yeah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. After surviving a near-death experience, the men are shaken, but physically unscathed. They all got mangled up and chaffed up. Their raft, though, is destroyed. That was been fucking scary, man. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. We were getting smashed in the rocks and all sorts, so, uh, do appreciate that. Sam and Dan's swift actions saved Vic and Kyle from annihilation on the rocks. It's fucking hairy, mate. Like, that was. I think that was the, the closest I've been to copping at this trip. Thanks for coming and helping us, guys. Let's get back to camp before dark. Yeah, yeah. And first light tomorrow, we'll try and salvage as much of this as we can. With their raft in tatters and Vic's eel lost to the ocean, the men now face a second night with empty stomachs. Where the hell's the rest of the raft? Oh, shit, is that the raft? Fripster is no longer, boys. Yes. Vic's got a brave face on that, but he's really shook up. He could have just been knocked unconscious, brain splattered out in a rock. He could have died. Like, actually, he could have died. Vic's near-death experience isn't the only thing on his mind. It's been a little bit uh, quite difficult today, truth known for me. Uh, it's coming up to the 5th, which is the date of my first date with my missus. And I'm missing her immen immensely. Uh, so tomorrow I may spend lots and lots of time contemplating uh, my missus and all that sort of thing. Morning. <laughs> Oh, that was a good sleep. <laughs> oh, morning. After a savage sandfly attack 24 hours ago, the men have spent their first night raised off the ground in their own beds. Good morning. Oh, last night was wonderful. Last night was the best unbroken sleep I've had by a mile. This time it's Vic who hasn't slept a wink. Vic looks like he spent the entire night sitting on a fence post. The poor bugger looks absolutely drained today. Vic looks a little bit edgy today. I can see him cracking a little bit. Hopefully he's all right. You know, he's not the kind of guy who would show his emotions. 
It was definitely that kind of old school British macho meal. Today is the 20th anniversary of Vic's first date with his wife. Never again, never again this long. The greatest thing that ever happened to me, other than being born, was my wife. I can't wait to get back to Cheryl. Smell her, taste her, touch her, feel her, all them things. I love that woman so much. It's immense, truly immense. As human beings, when we're stripped of everything, the real essence of who we are is laid bare. Every single one of them will have a low point. It is just the nature of survival. It's the nature of enduring hardship. If you can take a long, hard look at yourself when you're at your lowest ebb, and in that moment you can accept what you see, in my eye, that's what makes you a true survivor. Devastated. Absolutely devastated. This is literally what we were getting smashed against yesterday. So dangerous. Yeah. Oh, I feel so dreadful at the moment. It's unbelievable. This beautiful, dangerous paradise it can be a killer. You take your eye off the ball and she's going to bite you in the ass. The raft crash will stay with me till the day I die. These guys saved my life. In camp, Vic calls the men together for a chat. I'd just like to say if I ever offended anybody, upset them unduly and it weren't deserved, then I apologise. It won't happen again. I worry immensely about providing for me and mine. So perhaps that's why I compensate for working so physically hard, like a fool, like a donkey. I've got a fantastic wife and kids, but I have this overwhelming urge to provide. It drives me more than anything else. And the fear of not being able to do that is terrifying. Terrifying. Vic, the man that said a few weeks ago um, he does not see the point in crying, cried. The way that you describe your wife and your family, I find inspirational. I've never known a man to come away with a group of guys and to say, I love my wife to bits. She's the best thing I've ever experienced in my life. I, I've I never hear that. And that's one thing I'm going to take away from you. I'm going to, I'm going to take that. Every time you talk about Cheryl, like, I feel like she's in the room. Don't get me wrong, but you pissed me off more than just about anyone here. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, yeah. mate, you're worth every ounce of you. You've lifted us up more times than I can say. We'd be seriously worse off if you weren't here. I weren't expecting this. I won't be on I'll be honest with you, not at all. I expected difficulties and hungers and confrontation and conflict, but not to find something out about me. That was the last thing I expected. What a great, great bunch of blokes these really are. What a great bunch of blokes. I ain't never gonna see eye to eye with them all, but on this island, it's, it's a family. It's the island family. Vic calls an end to his fishing strike and heads out on his own to catch dinner for the group. So nice and steady, nice and fucking steady. Hold your ground. We're good, we're good, we're good. It's been three days since the men had anything substantial to eat and they are obsessing about food. They said I saw this documentary about some women that were still breastfeeding kids at the age of, was it three, four? I always think that the longer you're on the breast, the better. What, eight, nine? Yeah, I think if you're taking off the breast too early, you it become short. stunts your growth. Well, hello! Yay! Yay. Gentlemen. Yes, Vic, sir. Really How are we all? What'd you get, Vic? I wish I had a fish for each of us, but alas, I don't. What I can say, though, is this. Of the five fish I've caught... Hello. ..two are the biggest I have ever caught in all my life. Yeah. And one of them is the size of a small dog. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Daddy
Charlie brought home the bacon. Yeah! yeah. yeah. They are massive, Vickers. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. For he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. He's back to normal Vic fellows. Shouting and uh, whooping and getting fish and stuff like that, everything that he loves. Look at the size of that bitch. Oh. Fripster will sail again. Fripster 2 will sail again. I can't get the Titanic theme to in my head. That was like Titanic. So if I was Kate Winslet, who was Leonardo? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to smash him repeatedly in the face, but I think me and Vic were in danger of becoming quite good friends. A huge respect for the guy. When in doubt, send Vic out. Next time on the Women's Island. You are not leaving this island. I don't care if I have to carry you on my fucking back. The one thing we need for George is food. Get the knife! Get the knife! Come here, come here, come here! I think it's about time that we get out there and get a bit brutal. There, 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 there. Go.